This is the Momentum Podcast. Hey, everybody, this is Jeremy Bergeron, business strategist with Alex Sharfin's team. I'm super pumped to wrap up this conversation that Alex had with a few of our members. They start talking about how they now are able to consistently analyze their business in a way that yields true momentum for them and anyone in their company. You are going to love this episode because here's where they talk about the final piece of the puzzle, which is how do you really build infrastructure? This one's going to be epic. Check it out. I'm Alex Sharfin, and this is the Momentum Podcast, made for empire builders, game changers, trailblazers, shot takers, record breakers, world makers, and creators of all kinds. Those among us who can't turn it off and don't know why anyone would want to. We challenge complacency, destroy apathy, and we are obsessed with creating momentum so we can roll over bureaucracy and make our greatest contribution. Sure, we pay attention to their rules, but only so that we can bend them break them, then rewrite them around our own will. We don't accept our destiny, we define it. We don't understand defeat because you only lose if you stop, and we don't know how. While the rest of the world strives for average and clings desperately to the status quo, we are the minority, the few, who are willing to hallucinate there could be a better future, and instead of just daydreaming of what could be, we endure the vulnerability and exposure it takes to make it real. We are the evolutionary hunters, clearly the most important people in the world, because entrepreneurs are the only source of consistent, positive human evolution, and we always will be. The last thing we feel like we help businesses do is to consistently analyze the business through the same lens so that you can consistently get the same types of answers and know where to build. We use the five core functions as one of those major lenses of lead gen, nurture, conversion, delivery, retention, resell. And I often share with people that if you start analyzing your business through a consistent lens, you will automatically make better decisions in the business. Um, I'll start with you, Andrea. Would you, what, what is having that process of analyzing the business to understand what to do next done for you? It opened my eyes not to how the clinic was running because the clinic is running great. I just need to step out of it. But for the online business, I was just like, this is an epic failure. And no wonder the, the results are so sporadic. And that's the biggest reason why Laura is on is to completely restructure and rebuild that. So right now we're, we know that um, our lead nurture is failing the most we're not getting consistent leads. So therefore we're not going to move up the billionaire code ladder until we get that taken care of. So all we've been focusing on is how we can build the business to get consistent leads. We're not focusing on the delivery. We're not focusing on the content. We're now saying, okay, for the next 90 days, this is all we're working on. And once that feels a little bit better then the next 90 days, we can work on the content, but it's keeping us so compartmentalized and so focused on the goal that we aren't deviating and going all over the place and scattering our energy. Yeah. And prior to having this system, Andrea, can you remember points where you were like, what do I do next? Oh, yeah. Even still, I'm sort of like, what should I be working on today? And then I'm like, oh, right. Go back to <laughs> like our plan, you know? Yeah. So that will never go away. But now I don't feel overwhelmed by not knowing what to do next. And even this week, if anyone's been following me, um, I don't know if anybody follows me, but you should because I'm amazing. Um, <laughs> I've been trying to get up now at like 5 a.m. And before that would have been like the stupidest decision ever. But now I'm getting up with the purpose. So getting up earlier and enjoying that silence while the rest of my family is usually sleeping has also like that never would have materialized if I wasn't feeling so calm with how my business is running. I love that, Andrea. And I saw the story with you up at 5 a.m. So this is what 5 a.m. looks like. <laughs> 5 a.m. looks like and what a naturopath looks like at 5 a.m. So there's like a few things going on there. It's possible there. It's totally possible. So yeah. um, if you guys aren't following Justin Wallace, Andrea and Amanda, you totally should be. So um, Amanda Minear, same thing on a, in a law firm having that consistent analysis of the law firm to know where to allocate resources. What has it done for you? Um, well, attorneys are very stuck in their ways, <laughs> especially the ones who've been around for a long time. Um, my partner that I work with, he has been doing this for over 25 years. So there's some, there's always a little bit of challenge of getting people to 
make some adjustments and changes to the way they're doing things. But when you sit down together as a team and talk through, you know, how is our lead generation doing? How is our nurturing doing? How are, our, you know, how are we taking care of our clients? We just spent uh, last quarter, the second quarter of the year, working on um, delivery. And that was probably the most challenging to get things to change. But I see a difference already in the um, clients being more happy. It was about learning how to teach them expectations. You know, I can't make the VA do anything, but I can argue and I can, I can push where I can, but I can't make things magically happen. So we were getting clients that were getting upset with us and um, because of not setting very good expectations. So once we kind of really looked at that and started communicating that as part of the analysis of our delivery process, um, I see it changing already with our clientele. So now we're kind of back in lead generation. We figured out that, you know, we kind of turned a faucet on and we're getting hit like crazy with leads right now, which is awesome. <laughs> One of my team members that I sat down with yesterday was an overwhelm. And it's like, okay, we, this is a good problem to have, but I understand that it's a problem and we just need to figure out how to, to you know, manage that. So that's what we're focusing on this quarter. Yeah, that's awesome. And so even in a law firm with people who've been around for a while, once you start looking at this through this lens, it really does just make everybody kind of focus in the same place. Right, exactly. And awesome. everybody kind of buys in. It's that whole thing of, you know, everybody on the team is a true believer and they are bought into this is what we're doing. And um, so the whole team is kind of moving forward together. And, and I, I wanted to mention real quickly, you kind of mentioned the masterclass, the Momentum Masterclass. Probably the biggest change that I've seen in working through this program is in me, is in my life being better and me being happier and healthier and all of those things. And don't, I know you talk about the business growth, but you should really tout that as well because quality yeah. of life is um, um, way better than what I would say a year ago. <laughs> Can't, yeah, I can't. Well, you personally, right? So people often yeah. say, you know, Alex, I came to you to fix my business and I feel like my marriage and my life have benefited the most. Yes. Exactly. So that's awesome. Thanks for bringing that up, Amanda. I appreciate you making the distinction. Justin, same thing for you. What is having that consistent analysis done in a retail business? I'll be honest. The five core function exercise is like my least favorite <laughs> thing to do. <laughs> um, it's, it's hard for us uh, to do just because it's been, it's one of those, so you do every month, you do every quarter, you do every year, right? Well, when one of the things we noticed is we've had two points on there, right? They're retention and resell, and then the, uh, oops, sorry, hands on the other side. Um, nurture have been our biggest, weakest points for most of the year. And we work on it and we an analyze it and it'll go up. And then the next quarter comes and it falls right back down. Cause like when you do these analysis, you have to really ask yourself, you know, like objectively, what has changed? Mm -hmm. And one of the things we found out in the beginning is we were just taking the ones we did from the month prior and just recycling it. And then we found out that was not the best way to do it. So it takes us a while. Um, we argue a lot as a team trying to, I mean, just arguing our points. So like, you know, I, I think we're doing this, this is improved or no, like we kind of dropped the ball here. Um, so I say it's my least favorite just because it's, it's time consuming for us. Um, but it is incredibly effective because it tells us exactly what's wrong. Um, and it's things I think we intuitively know, but we don't know how to put it on a, you know, on the waterfall, unless it goes through that process. Right. Yeah. So yeah, again, don't like doing it, but it works out really well. Um, and we've been able to use that every quarter now and every month to just get a good feel for, okay, this is where we were. This is what we tried. Here's the results. It kind of worked in this way. It didn't really work in that way, but without that lens, like I have no way to judge. Yeah. So it's absolutely necessary. So Justin, let's be, let's just get real, like with all four of you. So two, two, I'm going to finish after this question. So one is I want you guys to just speak to what Amanda said, like, have you had a personal effect coming out of this, this program, but also just this other thing. So Justin, has there, there ever been a time in your career where you loved planning? No, no. Like, you know, and, and I, I always tell this to entrepreneurs, like, hey, your apprehension around planning is very natural. Let me tell you why. When you look at all four of you who are on this call, I look at people like I, I can see just by how you talk, how you hold yourselves, the things you say, the language you use. You are always moving forward. You're always doing something. You're, you know, you're not comfortable standing still. You're not comfortable in stasis. Things have to be growing. And here's what happens when we acknowledge that we're planning we are in a moment where we are acknowledging we don't know where we're going. 
Because in the fact that we're planning, we're acknowledging we don't know the destination. And that creates like this precarious feeling for entrepreneurs, for people like us, for evolutionary hunters who always want to be on the hunt, chasing something down. However, if we're willing to lean into a process, we can get to the other side of it. Like I always tell people, you will be excited about some of the meetings you have with your team, but you're never going to be excited about all of them. We're going to help you get through it in a way that they're actually productive. So Justin, I, can, can you um, answer or speak to, the, to what Amanda mentioned? How, how has this program benefited you in your personal life? Um, well, I just kind of carried the cadence over. Uh, I don't keep like two separate waterfalls or anything, but my personal stuff ends up on my business waterfall. And it just makes things a lot simpler. Um, it's a lot less crazy because before, like I said, I didn't have a calendar. So I had like, you know, the, I, I had stuff on my to-do list. I had stuff on this other to-do list. I had stuff in the project management software and there's just stuff everywhere. And now it's just in one place. So it feels like I can kind of breathe and just be like, okay, if I need to go look somewhere, I look at the calendar and I look at the waterfall. Um, if something's missing and just put it on the waterfall. So um, from that perspective, it's just been a lot easier to just deal with everything, both business and personal. Yeah. Um, and then two, it's just, I'll, be, I'll just leave it at that. It's just things are a lot easier. That's honest. awesome. You guys, it, it all sounds like you have the same habits I do. Like when I get uncomfortable, I go look at the waterfall. I'm like, oh, okay, we're good. We're good. You know, I have a, a sign on my wall that says no random ideas to keep me from like calling my team and telling them random stuff. And when I, when I think about like sending over something random, I go look at the waterfall and I'm like, this is what you're disrupting. So same question for you, Wallace. Has this program had a personal effect on your life? Oh, a, a huge one, um, Alex. That, uh, I remember when, when we were talking about starting up, you talked about kind of the unique burden that I had on me because not only, you know, am I running, honestly, a fairly complicated company, but um, a lot of people know my, my wife, Ashton, and I work together and we also are raising eight children together. Yeah, let's just let that sink in for everybody. He said eight, not a children, not, not <laughs> eight children, eight. <laughs> So we, we have, we have a lot on our plates and, you know, life, it, it, it was easy for things to be overwhelming and I don't function well in, in overwhelm. Um, all the things you talk about that happen to us as entrepreneurs, when we get into overwhelm, like I, I could probably be your poster child for all those <laughs> things. just kind of shutting everything down yeah. and I frankly have too many people, uh, business wise and personally relying on me to, to allow what used to happen with all of that. And um, coming in and, and getting the cadence in place has given me absolute freedom um, to, you know, to be able to do all the ambitious things that I want to do in my life and actually be able to show up and, and be good at those things. Um, I made a note, I'm, I'm glad you asked about this because I made a note before we got on of one thing that I really wanted to share from my experience for anybody that is, is in this or is thinking about getting into this. And that is, I had some hesitation when we first started where you were really preaching on the importance of, of self-care for the entrepreneur, of us uh, using this program to help take care of ourselves. And I balked at that a little bit. You know, self-care seems so selfish when you have so many people that are relying on you to do something. But I have been taught this lesson again and again that it is beginning with ourselves as the entrepreneur that makes all the rest of this work. And I, like I said, I have to keep learning this lesson because a couple of times things will get big, they'll get stressful, I'll drop off the self-care and it's like everything starts to fall apart until I remember I need to come back and get me in line because everything flows from me as the center point in my business. And so reconnecting with that has changed everything because I put myself in a healthier place. I put myself in a happier place and all of that puts me in a place where I can show up for my team. I can show up for my wife. I can show up for my kids in a better way than would be possible in any other way. And that really is only the structure of the system that helps keep me there rather than I get lucky every once in, once in a while. Like I can continually repeat that again and again and again now. And I'm eternally grateful to you for that. It's Thanks, Wallace. I appreciate you writing that down and sharing it. That's awesome. Can um, I speak on that a minute, Alex? Um, yeah, please, Justin. I, I totally forgot about that whole aspect of everything. Um, this past December, um, I was going through a really rough spot just kind of personally and uh, just freaking out. The business was growing, but I was having a really hard time. 
And I was just, it, just like Wallace said, I was in a state of just overwhelm. Like I was just shutting down. I didn't want to talk to anybody and just having a rough time. But I remember, uh, I think, I think it was Deanna who told me, she was like, look at what you have going on. You've been traveling. It's the holidays. You're not eating right. You're not exercising anymore. And look at your state of mind and how it is. So just going back on the topic of healthcare, I was like, okay, that's a good point. So th this kind of happened again to me a couple months ago. And I just, I remember, I remember that having that conversation with Deanna and I was just like, well, if I can't make it all work, I can at least make one thing work. And it was like the most consistent I ever like stayed actually at the gym. I just made sure if I can't make my business run the way I want to at this present moment, then I'm going to make sure I'm going to make damn sure I get to, get to the gym every single day. Hmm. And that was like the one thing. It was like the anchor that like kept me sane and kept me from you know going to that state of full overwhelm. So I guess just from a personal perspective, like Wallace said, like that has absolutely been the case for me as well. So yeah. And it doesn't feel selfish once you get to that other side and you see the effect, right? Exactly. Wallace, does it feel like, doesn't it, doesn't it feel like, like, here's, here's where I am now. I'm at the point where if I'm not taking care of myself, I feel guilty, not selfish. I feel guilty that I'm going to abuse my team. I feel guilty that I'm going to snap. I feel guilty that, you know what? And it's, it's something as simple as like, if I get on the huddle and everybody's watching me and everybody's watching all of you and I'm the slightest bit reactive, here's what everyone on the team thinks. I wonder what I did. Like, that's just, that's how it is being on a team. And so when you get out of that reactivity, everybody's in a different place. Yeah, that's Alex, you mentioned something about an entrepreneur really should treat themselves as a professional athlete. Yep. Um, because you are the linchpin, the keystone in your business. And when you do that, it is the most responsible thing you can do for your team because everyone and everything relies upon you showing up the right way. And that ensures that you can. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks, Wallace. Andrea, now let's take this question to you. Sorry about that. Um, so, so same for you. Has it changed your life personally? You know what? I, um, I'd say the biggest thing that hit me even before I joined was I remember my, because I have a five-year-old and a three-year-old at home and my husband, and he was just like, you just can't be in front of your computer all the time. Like the girls can't constantly see you in front of your laptop all the time. So now creating this strategy, I feel less that I'm having to constantly hammer workout or be a slave to my business all day long. I can come home and most nights I don't even pull out my computer again to do more work. Um, and the other thing that it's really helped me do that I've noticed the most since onboarding other people is I'm communicating better. Mm -hmm. I'm communicating when I need help. Yeah. I'm communicating when I'm not showing up well. I was always afraid to like, I have to be the, the face of the business and make sure everything looks good. And I'm showing up more authentically being like, guys, like Brooklyn kept me up all night. I'm not a hundred percent. Just like, give me a pass today. I just don't have anything for you. And same with my husband. So when I come home, I'm like, babe, like I need an hour of time where I can be not distracted and just focus so that I can be present for you guys the rest of the time. And if you can't give that to me, then we have an issue here. So we have to find a way to resolve that. So I would say just communicating with humans has <laughs> made everything like that's the biggest thing because I didn't realize how many times I either miscommunicated something or I misinterpreted what somebody said to me. And so I haven't been afraid to walk through that and make sure that I'm very clear and understanding what they're actually saying. And, um, and that has happened everywhere with my patients, in my personal life, with my, um, my employees. Um, that's been huge, really huge. Oh, that's so awesome. Thanks for sharing, Andrea. Um, Adam Lloyd said, love that entrepreneur should live more like professional athletes. You know, I, I always share that. I, tell, I ask every audience of entrepreneurs, if you're not treating yourself like a professional athlete, why? You have the earning potential, the influence potential, the affluence potential of any athlete out there. You should be treating yourself like one. And like Wallace said, you are the most important person in the building. And so the more you take care of this, the more you're taking care of the team and everything else, you can give yourself leverage in your business by taking care of you everything gets better you know my whole life what i've always wanted to do is work with people who are changing the world and and help and support and create the systems and the process and the structure and we couldn't do that if we didn't have incredible clients like 
all four of you and to, to come on and share like such different views of what we do has been really enlightening for me. I hope everybody who's been here with us enjoyed it. Please go to billionairecode.com, um, answer a few questions for my team, sign up for a call. And I can't wait to see the four of you are, uh, in our event. So hopefully you're coming next week and you'll be here. Can't wait to give you guys a big hug and, uh, and see you in person. Thanks guys. I really appreciate your time today and your sharing from a very transparent and real place. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Hey, everybody, it's Jeremy again. Thanks so much for listening again this week. You know, one thing that I get the privilege of doing is connecting with entrepreneurs across the entire spectrum of revenue, folks who are just getting started, folks who are well into their seven, eight plus figures. And one thing I've noticed is the folks that come into our programs, it seems to be game changing for them because once they implement it, it gives them an entirely different control system for the business. It allows them to set their outcomes and get their teams out in front of them so they can start achieving on a daily basis like they never have before. If you want to solve the issues that most entrepreneurs have of not knowing where they're going, how they're going to get there and what they should do next, then head over to billionairecode.com forward slash apply dash now. That's billionairecode.com forward slash apply dash now.